Ladies and gentlemen, no special introduction. Apostle Joshua Selma. I receive and manifest your power and your wisdom till the nation. Lifted up, exalted, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified, breathe, Lord. Upon my life, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life till the nations see Jesus, till the nations see Jesus, till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up, glorify. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe. breathe. I receive. I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Can you turn it into a very simple prayer tonight? This is why I desire to flourish. Someone is praying. Phenomenal revelations that have come from this altar to your destiny. Someone is praying. Let it be a desperate cry and a desperate desire. Shabare sabaraka tabranda gebelegeta. Rake parata kafra zabele meka tabaria kaparandos kobradieta. Shadabada katabranda gebeleke parusia. Shai para savende kepereko shabra asabalakata. Raka tabarata keperede kepalakato shabranda beleketia. Someone pray in one minute. Let this final session be most edifying to your spirit, man. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I don't intend to break the flow. It's been a phenomenal time. As I just sat down listening to Pastor Jerry, phenomenal revelation. Phenomenal revelation. Phenomenal revelation. Hallelujah. Didn't have the opportunity to follow other speakers, but I was so blessed. Just the revelations that have come, that alone should be able to shift someone else. You see, the assignment of revelations is to create transitions. Revelations forbid you from remaining at the same level. Every time genuine light come, they come with a force that propels forward. Revelations do not move people backward. Are we together? It can propel a man forward. And while standing, please let's honor the angel over this house, Reverend Sam and his lovely wife. We honor you, sir, sincerely. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor Jerry is left and then Apostle Opie is here. I met other incredible men and women of God. I honor everyone who has mounted this pulpit serving God's grace. The Lord bless you, ma. The Lord bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus. Please let's be seated for a few minutes. 
I know that our time is stretched and I do not intend to keep us longer than necessary. But just to wrap up tonight's session with a thought that was strong in my mind, just like Pastor Jerry shared, time will not allow me to do justice to the things that I've written, but I just decided to pick up three important um, aspects of my notes that I just want to bring and then we'll pray. I was to teach on growth and enlargement, but then I believe with all my heart that that which God is going to be doing in our lives, even after today, please listen, that in the name of Jesus Christ, by next year advance, you will return a thousand times greater. Shout a believing amen. amen. Psalm 115 verse 14. We'll just consider two scriptures. 115 and verse 14. I'd like you to read it as a prophetic word to your destiny. Are you ready? The Bible says, May the Lord give you increase more and more for you and for your children. Say amen. amen. May the Lord give you increase more and more. Hallelujah. So there are principles that are responsible for growth, excellence, and flourishing at any level. And a number of them, I believe, have been considered in various forms and various fashions by the speakers. I do not intend to get into all of those discussions, especially because I'm wrapping up today's session. But I desire to share, in addition to probably all that you've heard, just three principles to connect to and connect with all that we've heard as far as the matter of growth and increase is concerned. Number one, the first thing I want to share as a principle that supports growth and flourishing is the power of correct perception. The power of correct perception. Jeremiah chapter one, please. Would you give us 11 and 12 preferably from Amplified. Jeremiah chapter 1. So the discussion begins from verse 5. The young Jeremiah is discussing with God and this was a matter relating to his life, his purpose, and his destiny. And he says, while you were yet a child, while you were in your mother's womb, before you came forth, I called you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. By the time we get to verse 11, please, the Bible says the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? KJV will say, what seest thou? And then he replies by saying, I see the branch of an almond tree. Let's shout verse 12 together if you can see projected. One, two, three, please. Then the Lord said unto me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. The power of correct perception. Hallelujah. Many, many people have been limited in life, in business, in ministry, in career. Not necessarily because of the wrongdoings as far as adhering to the principles of growth is concerned. But that intrinsically there is something wrong with their understanding, their orientation and their perception. Hallelujah. That... The reality that is before you is as defined by your mindset. The reality that is before you is as defined by your orientation. Two people can be in a situation, perhaps a challenging situation. And for one person, he sees it as an opportunity to rise, to thrive. I hope you know that the same wind connecting to the flow of the teachings we've had, the same wind that blows on the palm tree blows on every other tree. It does not uniquely isolate the palm tree. No. When the wind blows, it has no prejudices or biases. Every tree that is before the wind gets affected by the wind. What they define by the movement of the wind is left to their perception. But as for the wind, it will move. Are we together now? Yes. The wind moves on the mango tree like it moves on the palm tree. The wind moves on the shrubs like it moves on the established trees. You will think the size of the tree should, should create some kind of empathy. When the wind moves, it moves. 
The survival of the trees does not depend on whether the wind comes or not. They have been able to redefine a strategy for survival. The power of accurate perception. There are people today, the greatest miracle happened to their lives and in their lives and from their lives because of the challenges they went through. Are we together? A ministry was birthed out of a woman's many years of not having a child, for instance. She would have lived in regret and pain, attracting sympathy from across the nations. But she decided to redefine. Listen, it is not what happens to you that hurts you. It's the meaning you give to it. Why does one million excite you today and frustrate you tomorrow? It was always one million. Your perception was lower than one million. So it was a miracle. When your perception rose higher than one million, it became a source of frustration. You need more. You need a higher dimension of that money. So one million no longer blesses you. Whereas when you were looking up to it, it was a miracle. You see that now? My life changed when I discovered that if you can change your perception, if I call someone now and I tell you I just send one million naira to your account, you start laughing. Then I say, April fool. Now hold on, hold on. Even if I did not say April fool and I was lying, you were still happy because you trusted what I was saying, even without seeing the alert. Look at the vacillations in your mood. And yet the truth is I never even sent anything. Don't even have your account number. But I said something to you that affected your interpretation. Are we together now? And you became happy. And as soon as you found out I was joking, it changed. Your destiny is at the mercy of your perception even beyond the wind that blows. The wind that blows, blows on everybody. The challenges you are facing is not personal to you. It's just a limited mindset that makes you think you are uniquely isolated for suffering. It's a lie. You are not the first to look for money. You are not the first to look for land. Hello? <laughs> you are not the first to trust God for grace to scale your reputation. It's a reality and a challenge that befalls all men who seek growth. But what distinguishes failures and those who thrive and excel is their perception. And when your perception is carved out of scripture, it becomes an anchor. You see, because it takes a while for results to happen. Did you hear what I said? The day a woman gets pregnant is not the day she gives birth. No matter how healthy she is. So when you see a woman who is one month pregnant, her inability to give birth is not a health issue. It's a process issue. You don't pray and say, Madam, eat well, eat better. There are times all you are doing is right. All you need to do is to redefine your perception and sustain the staying power. Listen. Are we together? What is your interpretation of failure? Who called it failure? It matters who feeds your interpretation. When man came in Adam, in, 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 uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us, as far as we know and as far as we read, that they never heard anyone speak to them. The first person who framed the understanding of Adam was God himself. And what he heard was, be fruitful. That was the perception he had. But when the serpent came, the serpent came to Eve and said, the first thing I want to know is what God told you. I will have to depend on what he has said to alter your perception. If I cannot find out what God has said, it becomes difficult to deceive you. He says, I fear less as Satan beguiled Eve. You see that now? And he said, so what has God told you? We may freely eat of all the trees except this one. The day we eat, we will die. He said, aha. Uh -huh. Don't you think God may be hiding something from you? He knows that when you eat, your eyes will be open. You will be as the God, knowing good and evil. The Bible says when the woman saw, saw her perception became altered. Her perception changed. She did not see value in obedience again. She did not see value in honoring the words of God again. 
the Bible says when she saw that it was good for food and it was desired to make a man wise, her action was in honor to her perception. There are many of you, what you are binding today was the answer to your prayer. It's just that your perception has not yet been put together. Are we together? You prayed and said, God lift me. And in doing so, he took you. How do you think Joseph was going to become a prime minister? If God described the detail for Joseph on how he would become a prime minister, he would reject every part of that. Is that true? So the way God works is that he does not tell you how you will get there. He only gives you the end point so that you will know that the end is the manifestation of God's glory. But you will have to depend on him for every work. How do you call throwing a man into a well as advancement? How do you call selling a man by his brothers as progress? If I were Joseph's pastor, right from the well, I would be binding the spirit and say, Lord, let this boy return back to his father's house. Yet I will be aborting the destiny of a great man. The power of accurate perception. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I thought you would say, For thou remove me. For thou art with me. Why did you come to join me there? Isn't it more profitable to remove me? Ask the three Hebrew boys. If they were removed from the fire arbitrarily, there would be no miracle. The miracle was because they were in the fire, not because they were delivered. The miracle was because they were in the fire, not because they were delivered. The if they avoided the fire, it would not be miracle enough. Not enough for the king to change his decree. Are we together? Many believers don't know how their answer looks like. This is the reason why we pray without profit. Because many believers have not been trained to understand how God answers prayers. Hmm. The Bible tells us, Reverend Sam, remember I'm, I'm not, it's a charge. It's a charge and we'll wrap up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm wrapping up the conference so you've had enough. You've been here from morning. So let me just do my final charge. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible tells us that they locked Peter in a prison and bound him hand and feet. Are we together now? And then the Bible says the church said, let's come together and pray. Watch this. Because the purposes of God needed to make progress. And they were praying. And the Bible tells us that it pleased Herod to vex certain Jews. After they beheaded James, he saw that it pleased them. And he kept Peter that after the Passover, he will hand them to the people. Then the Bible says in verse 5 or 6, he said, But prayer was made by the church unto God for him. In honor and in response to that prayer, an angel comes. And the Bible says that angel brought deliverance for Peter. But the most disturbing part of that scripture is that after Peter escaped and finally got to the door where they were praying, he now knocked the door and said, I have arrived. They opened the door and saw him and said, no. They thought it was his angel and closed the door back and kept praying. Perception. You prayed and said, God, honor me. And he sent you to a company with unfavorable conditions. Look beyond the conditions. That is where your destiny helper will meet you. Pharaoh would never have met Joseph in the house of his father. No. There was no connection. In fact, it was even through Joseph that Jacob and all his other sons were redeemed. Listen, this is a lesson. Perception. So that you can rejoice in the Lord always, even when it does not make sense. You may be owing the rent, but that pressure was mounted upon your spirit to help you study finances once and for all. So that you don't embarrass yourself at a transcontinental level. From that level you can study and make up your mind. There is a healthy pressure that life needs to come. Pain can be a gift. You must learn to receive the gift of pain. You don't like what I'm saying? Like it all. If it is growth that you desire. An angel appears to Mary Reverend Sam. And says you are highly favored 
I have studied the life of Mary carefully. I do not find anything there that represents favor by my definition. If an angel from God comes to tell you you are highly favored, somebody should die who is your enemy. Somebody should give you a gift. The next thing that surrounded that woman was trouble. First, Joseph said, I've been hearing that you are pregnant and I'm innocent. And because of that, you and whatever rabbi, <laughs> you are about to lose your marriage. And then every time you are about to lose your marriage, what you are hearing is you are highly favored. Not just favored. What is the favor and the trouble that came? And then after enduring that pregnancy, about to give birth, they will not even let you give birth to your child in peace. Then to hear that Herod is looking for you and your child. Describe for me using spiritual intelligence what is favorable about that situation. And even after Jesus was born, there was no special honor anywhere that was given to Mary that showed that it was favor. That one day Jesus put a triumphant entry and said, today I want to introduce the woman that suffered. You don't have no idea. Yet the Bible says she favor. She was even part of the 120 that had to endure to receive the Holy Ghost. No special treatment. The same Holy Ghost that came and got her pregnant. She had to join the other people to wait. Perception. Have you been casting your miracle away? Have you been prolonging pain because you do not have the eye in the spirit to see grace when it comes? Are we together now? This was the problem with the wife of the sons of the prophet. The Bible tells us that in the house, Reverend Sam, it says in the dwelling of the wise, there are two things you will always find. Treasure and oil. Treasure is flamboyant, attractive, you can see it. But the oil is why the treasure remains. And when the treasure had depleted in that woman's house, there was still oil left. And the woman said, I have nothing. This was her perception. I have nothing. I consider my son as something, not knowing it was the oil that brought him. I consider all my estates as something. They all left. But in the house of the wise, there are treasures and there is oil. Even when the treasures deplete, your confidence is that. And you see, the treasure is usually in golden vessels, but the oil is in earthen vessels. So if you are asked to choose, the treasure looks more attractive and glorious than the oil. Yet the oil is why the treasure comes. Are we together? And the Bible says she went to the prophet and the prophet said, you, you said your husband was a prophet. If it is true that that man was a prophet, it means he had the wisdom of God. Go and check your house. It, it can't be that there is nothing. It's a lie. The problem is your perception. If it is true that he was a prophet, there must be oil in that house. I agree that the treasure has gone in exchange for the debt, but there must be oil. And she said it's true, but it's small. He said, no, go and borrow vessels. The size of the oil is a description of your mindset. You don't borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. And he said in borrowing, borrow not a few. Expand your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Go and borrow vessels. Listen. Listen. To borrow vessels, he said borrow not a few. Go and borrow vessels. The oil is not small. It's because administrative excellence has not been added to the oil. That's why you've not seen what it can do. Go and, bury, and borrow vessels. It's because financial intelligence has not been added to your prophetic gift. That's why you cannot see the excellence that comes from it. For as long as your oil is in a small container, limited by your mindset, your thinking, and your perception, the oil that can save nations will be hiding in the room of a woman. There was nothing the prophet gave her. He only showed her how to see well. Can I tell you the truth? That singing ability God put within you, it still has the power to feed you, feed your generation and serve the purposes of the kingdom. But the reason is because if you don't train your spirit to see well, you will keep throwing out of your life through disdain something that is another person's prayer point. Most of the things we use today for the glory of God, we always had it within us. 
it didn't just come it was primed by correcting your perception there are many noisemakers who are preachers but they are living profitless lives because their perception they've not been able to coordinate their energy to focus it well so that it brings them increase and lifts them what seest thou he said the rod of an almond tree what did you call the job loss i am finished your definition has given it a meaning that has pegged you and for 10 years you will remain there but for another person he looks at it and says could this be how my next testimony is about to come he sees the job loss as the end of a season and the beginning of another and instead of crying he begins to give praise while he waits for what three people were relieved of their job but one person would praise and celebrate god into the next season and another will be attracting sympathy in pain the prayer you need to pray if you really want to rise is for God to grant you a changed perception. I tell you sincerely, right from when I was in Zaria, I refused to see Zaria. Zaria came out of my mind years ago. Perception has an energy. It has an attracting power. It will draw people to your life that reflect your limitation. You can be in a limited place, but because your perception is global, kingdom, excellence, superior, you will mysteriously draw people that reflect your growth and your excellence. This is true. Religion and psychology both agree on this. That there is an energy that propels out of the health of your thinking and can draw to your life people, conditions, and resources consistent with your belief and your perceptions. Are we learning? Yes, what seest thou? I see the rod of an almond tree. Let me reduce my points from three to two. I will just give us one more <laughs> and we'll pray. The final principle, and I believe that this beautifully ties up everything you probably have learned through this conference and even through today, is the power of the prophetic. Let me show you something about the prophetic advantage that if not introduced in the life of a man, all factors can be right, but you will still fail. The prophetic has such superior significance in helping us become, in helping us thrive, in helping us remain. Are you ready for this? Mark 11, please. We've been talking about trees today. There is a kind of tree I want you to look at. Mark chapter 11. Oh, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. For sake of time, I want us to start from verse 20. I will give you the story. So Jesus is hungry. And the Bible tells us that he was hungry at a time and a season where it was not the time for figs. But... Jesus sees a fig tree. We are talking trees now. He shall be like a tree. So let's examine one kind of tree. This tree was healthy, connected to the root. This tree had leaves, meaning the system of transferring nutrients was working. There was absolutely nothing wrong with this tree. The leaves were green. Come on, agriculturists, talk to me. When leaves are green, it's a sign of health. Yet, fruits did not come. And when Jesus saw it, you would think Jesus would be compassionate to say every factor is in place. Let's give it time. He cursed it immediately. I read that scripture for many years and I did. The faith part is not what. Why did Jesus have to curse that tree? It seemed harsh to me. At least the Bible says it was not the time of figs. Ah, until I read the fact that the Bible says he shall be like a tree. 
if it is planted by the riverside, there are expectations. The Bible says it yields its fruit in season. Whose leaf does not wither, it does not stop there. Then it says whatsoever he does. There is a possibility on that tree that even though it is not its season, because of the kind of advantage it was introduced to, it should still produce. Are we together now? The Bible respects seasons, but it also tells you that because life operates by times and seasons, there are times that the factors are against you. You will need something to help accelerate you and superimpose even beyond seasons. In, in John chapter 5, it was a particular season the angel came to steer the water. You had to be patient for the season to come. It was that once a year patience that made the man's trouble get to 38 years. When Jesus came, now he said, if I leave this man until the next season, I can do something. I have dominion over seasons. And the Bible says right there and then, it was not yet the season for the angel to steer the water, yet because Jesus came. So Jesus was saying, my presence around that fig tree should create an effect beyond the seasons. The fact that I drew close to that tree, don't give me the excuse of agriculture again. If you understand the value of my presence, the rod of Aaron bordered in 24 hours. It was not connected to the root. It failed every agricultural principle. But because the presence factor came, it vetoed explanations and still produced. Seasons are powerful. But do not peg your growth to only seasons. God starts by teaching you the rudiments of growth. But later he takes you to the inner chambers of the spirit and says, let me show you what can distinguish you in life and in destiny. He comes to the tree and says, I demand of you fruit. The effect of my presence should produce extraordinary results. Are we together? The prophetic is powerful. So the rod of Aaron, number one, that it is rod. You know what makes a thing rod? Rod means it has been detached from the root for a long time. For anything to become a rod means you have harvested it out of the root. Are we together? And like Pastor Jerry was sharing, when from a natural standpoint, when a thing is detached, for whatever reason, it may not even be the making of the tree. It was people that came and caught it. The tree did not have power. Have you read the scripture that says, deliver me from those who are more powerful than me? There are times that the factors are beyond your control. It is not carelessness. It is just that there are sentiments, tribal, racial sentiments. You can get into an office. You are qualified. You are excellent. You are exceptional. But simply on account of your faith, someone will stand up and beat my chest and say, you can be as learned as you want. For as long as I am here, you will not rise. You need to live long enough to know that the wickedness factor on earth is significant enough for you to be aware of it. That the whole world lies in wickedness. And because of that, it can interrupt the natural pace of how things should have been. There are times that everything is right. But simply because this is the world of men whose potentials are tampered by the presence of demons and systems and structures that consistently fight the program of God. Jesus brought the presence factor to the tree. Yet the tree could not see that there is an advantage you have beyond just the agricultural provisions and Jesus cursed it and left. When he cursed it, the Bible says by the next day when they came, they found that tree withered. Question, if you were not there when Jesus was cursing the tree, you would come and stand in front of that tree and be surprised. What was wrong that the tree dried? The tree was still connected. The wind did not come. The, it was not lack of rain. The leaves were still green and suddenly turned overnight. Please look at me. Even when winds blow, my apologies for this. Please forgive me. Are we together? Even when winds blow, someone help me with this, one of the ushers or anyone. Listen to me. Even deterioration by natural means allows for time. But when your tree withers overnight, 
it was supernaturally manipulated by any spirit. Are we together? When your favor dries up overnight, that is not business sense again. You need to step out and wear that prophetic regalia. Something is wrong here. Are we together? There are times in your life you will see occurrences that do not subscribe to the natural law of success or the natural law of failure. You will see factors that are, be, you will know that there are hands engineering tragedies at an accelerated rate. The natural course of life is that people should live a useful life and die in old age. By the time three of your destiny helpers die in one week, you need to remove your, it's not brain work again. You need a prophetic advantage. Something is tampering with the natural course of my growth. I hope you believe this. There are times that everything can be right. In John chapter 21, Peter went to go and fish. You talk of flourishing. Professionalism was in Peter. He was a professional fisherman. He had the boat, the right tool. He had the net, the right tool. He was at the sea, the right place. All the factors were there, yet he did not catch fish. And yet the fish was in that river. My question is, who took away the fish? Because the fish that later came was still in that river. So that same business, there is still profit in it. Why is it not coming to you? Everything is there. The store is there. The excellence is there. Yet he did not catch fish. When Jesus showed up, he said, little children, have you any catch? He said, we've been toiling, no. He said, cast your net to the right side. And the Bible says, as they obeyed that prophetic instruction, there was, like we call it, a net breaking, boat sinking, catch of fish. And Peter saw that and he said, depart from me. You are not a human being. Whoever you are, he said, this has to be Jesus. Only him can produce this. Let me tell you the truth. I wish I would tell you that every result you will get in your life will be as a product of productivity alone. Will be a product of excellence and intelligence. Don't get me wrong. Every factor you have been taught stands valid. But because you are living in the world that is not all scientific, you are living in a world that is not all intellectual, you are living in a world that was first spiritual before it imported all these varieties of things. In all you're getting, if you stop at the realm of brain, in all you're getting, if you stop at the realm of just productivity physically, you will be cheated in many ways in life. This is why God sent us here. I'm saying this because shortly we'll be speaking over your life. Listen to me. I compare the rod of Aaron and I compare the tree that is in Mark 11. All I see is injustice in my opinion. How does a rod not planted? How does a rod that does not even have any possibility most likely it must have been painted dead but simply because it was kept in the presence. Versus a tree that had its root and everything fine. I'm saying this because if you don't understand this, you will be annoyed with many people's results. You will see the gaps and before those gaps are closed, you will still see results. And the results will define many explanations. I can tell you, some of them have quietly smuggled themselves through prophetic conferences like this. And while they are still learning the excellence, while they are still learning productivity, they were foolish enough to shout amen to a prophetic word that came from a man of God. And as they shouted amen, while they were putting other factors in place, that prophecy began to reprogram possibilities within their space. As powerful as Jesus is and was, there were three prophets that played a role in his life for him to actually complete his assignment. Number one, Simeon the prophet. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the Baptist. Jesus, the word incarnate. Did he pray? Yes. Did he fast? Yes. Did he study? Yes. Was he under the scribes for learning? Yes. You would check all the lists, yet he would have failed woefully. And even with all that prophetic, he almost aborted destiny. 
if all you have is an intelligent mind then there will be a very painful lesson you will learn as you sojourn this wicked world if all you have is a good heart that is profitable but not enough for you to flourish let me tell you the truth flourishing and thriving is proof of mastery that you have learned all the laws that keep things in place ladies and gentlemen i'm looking at people today who right from the start of this conference listened attentively to speaker after speaker intelligent facilitator after another and most of you have learned all kinds of phenomenal principles that stand true eternally because they are derived from the truth of scripture but I bring you a dimension to add to all that you have heard. The prophetic is a mysterious advantage. Amen. Mysterious advantage. Did you hear what I said? Mysterious advantage. An advantage whose explanation does not relate with logic. I am a product of prophecy. I know what prophecy can do. I have seen what it has done to people's lives. If it were by the natural course of life, some of us would be far behind where we are today. Prophecy is an accelerator. It can push men. It can make things become. It can make things happen. I'm saying this because as we wrap up in the next one or two minutes, we're going to take time to pray, even if it's just three minutes. I want you to cry. Lord, my beast, I've learned the principles. Listen, you can put the store and employ staff, but only God brings customers. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Is that in your Bible? He said it is vain to wake up early. What is wrong with waking up early? Waking up early is a principle of diligence, but it is still vain to wake up early. What is sleeping in the night? That is the most graphic representation of diligence when you wake up in the night. It says, yet you will still eat the bread of sorrow for waking up early. The man who wakes up early in the morning and sleep late in the night, that should be the most prosperous person. Unfortunately, there are factors beyond your control. Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. So based on your diligence, there are certain customers who should come based on the natural cause of diligence, except for the fact that because you have vowed that your money will promote the kingdom, when you were praying, it was not only God that had you, Satan had you too, and said, what did you say your money would do next year for advanced conference? That souls will be won, destinies will be changed, and while they are coming, there is a diversion in the spirit. He says, I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. I have seen many visions in my life and I have seen many times where based on God's prophetic calendar, certain things should have already happened in the lives of people. So the lag is not God's desire that from prophecy to manifestation, demons and all kinds of factors interrupted the pace of the arrival and God knew that and that was the reason why he programmed the prophetic advantage. Can I tell you the truth? Even unbelievers know the power of the prophetic. Most of them will tell you they did well, but they will not tell you who spoke over them. By the privilege of God, God's grace, every man of God here, woman of God, you have had opportunities where you pray for unbelievers. You say, I hope you know it's in Jesus' name. They say, yes. They don't come in as businessmen. They come in as wise men. They know that if all I have is the ability to buy and sell, I will still fail. And you see somebody who is an unbeliever, in Jesus' name, he shouts, Amen. I don't believe in that Jesus, but at least I believe in his servant. And they get up and mysterious things begin to happen in their lives. You see, the prayer platform, or what Reverend Sam is doing with the transforming church, or what every servant of God here in their various expressions, you would be lying to just think it was all by the physical keys there alone. It's not true. There is a prophetic advantage. And somebody 
God has insisted that in this conference, you will not go back the way you came. Is this a good place for us to pray? Will you pray? Shout it, say, Father. Come on, pray. This is a praying church. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus. That prophetic advantage that propels me to the next level, let it rest upon my life. Someone go ahead and pray. Pray seriously and pray with power. Pray for your business. Pray for your ministry. My God, the power of God is in this place. The prophetic advantage. prophetic advantage in addition to my ability in addition to diligence I am rooted in the word rooted in prayer rooted in diligence in addition to an altered perception for good let your hand rest upon me let your hand rest upon me Shabarakata. Pray for him one minute. Sabra gade beleke parakatos, krapa kaparakatos sabra gade belenevet. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. First Chronicles chapter four, please nine to ten. Honestly, I sense such a strong anointing in this place. If you believe the prophetic word that is coming upon you tonight, you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes first chronicles chapter 4 9 and 10 now jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called him jabez why because i bore him in pain next verse and jabez called unto the god of israel saying everybody listen oh that thou wouldest bless me and do what enlarge my territory the third expression is our next prayer point and that your hand will be upon me do you know what happened to a man when the hand of the Lord came upon him he ran he didn't walk he ran and he overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel say father one more time shout it say father tonight and forever May your hand rest upon me, rest upon my ministry, rest upon my business. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray. Let your hand rest upon me in a way beyond confusion. Let your hand rest upon me. Let it be well with me. Let your hand rest upon 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 me. Spirit of the living God, be the advantage in addition to my skill, in addition to my intellect, in addition to all the provisions that are available to succeed. hallelujah hallelujah please look at me i want you to listen please listen reverend sam when god made man god made man complete the, the way God responded to a complete man was the same way God responded to dry bones. All of them needed speakings on them. You would think because Adam was already complete, there would be no need to prophesy on him. The 
the same way God spoke to a whole being, Adam, was the same way prophecy was made upon dry bones. Whether you are complete, having everything in place, or having nothing, you will never outgrow the power of prophecy. What was wrong with Adam? A man who came directly, the creativity of God himself, the artistry of God displayed at his finest. Would you need to add anything to such a man? His mind, brain, body, biology, everything was in place. And yet God said, this man is not complete. Every factor in place. The business is well built. All the factors, advertising, branding, marketing, creativity, relational principles. But it will lie like Adam. Something is still missing. And then when he sees dry bones, he still says in the economy of heaven, it is still the same thing. How do you have to prophesy fruitfulness for something that is already systemic to be fruitful? The brain is already there. The hands are already there. Let me tell you the truth. I believe in excellence. But excellence will never replace nor negate the power of prophecy. There are many of you who are surprised why things are not working. The truth is that everything to make it work is there. You are diligent. You have read the books. But there is a factor. And this is what by the spirit of God, I want to truly speak over someone. I stand with all humility and I tell you this. I am a beneficiary of the power of prophecy. When the hand of God comes upon your life, it becomes unmistakable. Unmistakable. Help that woman. Unmistakable. The Lord granted his servant to put this meeting, even though it cuts across an array of fields and professions. Let me speak to you, my dear business people. Do not allow intellect make you downplay the value of spiritual things. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and to lean not unto your own understanding. Then it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. That is the cancer that kills intelligent people. Wise in their own eyes. You can build a boat. You can build the ark. But only God brings the animals. The formula to attract animals from the bush on their own has not been given to any man. There are certain things in your success factor. Your success equation that only resides with God. You cannot receive it outside of him. It is his presence. Are you ready to receive? Years ago when I read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently please help two people for me now that shout under the anointing. I just saw fire just coming on two people. That fire and the Lord is telling me that that person you have a prophetic ministry it's a prophetic ministry a prophetic ministry and it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command you this day please listen it says that the Lord shall exalt you Reverend Sam, when I saw that word, I was in one room. I believed it. Exalt you above all nations of the earth. Your, the color of your skin notwithstanding. Listen, it is unto you according to what you choose to believe. You listen to nonsense, you will become what you are hearing. Did you hear what I said? It is your responsibility to culture your perceptions for the sake of where God is taking you. The Bible says in Genesis 12 verse 3, in thee shall all nations be blessed. I am a blessing. 
this is what you must believe it i am a blessing yes that you shall lay up gold as dust i believe it all you will never listen i wish i had time would have spoken about finances a bit reject poverty hear what i'm telling you now reject poverty as a personal mission reject it this is not the issue of canna reject it you will never be able to do much for the kingdom if you're incapacitated by the privilege of god's grace we have conferences happening across the continent and i cannot tell you the monies that are needed in millions of dollars to run these things except you are a thief and even if you are that you will still suffer what is on your head is what controls what is around your life and i'm releasing my faith with reverend sam i know we still have tomorrow but i want to speak from the depth of my heart this is why i came here tonight hallelujah that's why i came tonight it is from what we have received that we give we don't know everything at least for myself i don't know everything i don't have everything but there are things we have believe me believe me when god has given you something you have it. it's as simple and honest and sincere as that father in the name of jesus over someone's life and over someone's destiny i speak to you standing upon the grace of god's servant here in addition to the many vessels that have been here in the name that is above all names first let me start it this way every force that has sat on your destiny and your glory and will not allow you blossom we dislodge those forces now we dislodge those forces now we dislodge those forces now hey the bible says by you i can run through a troop by my god i can leap over a wall i place grace upon your life run like elijah run like elijah I prophesy over your destiny run like Elijah overtake the chariots of Ahab in the name of Jesus run like Elijah 10 years in one year one year in one month I prophesy to you 10 years in one year I shift you by prophecy enter a new season enter a new season Enter a new season. Enter a new season. Enter a new season. Listen. Please hear me. You are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value. You are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value. The reason why we honor global brands today is because there are enough men who have attested to the fact that those brands are valuable enough. You are as valuable as the presence of the people who attest to your value. They cannot reward you if they do not know you are there. Publicity is first a spiritual matter. There are aids, social media and the rest. But there is a hear ye him anointing. And if that grace is not on you, you can do all you can and nobody will hear you. Is someone ready to carry that grace? The grace that God has placed on his servant, placed on the men and the women of God here that will cause the nations, even the ends of the earth to hear you. For as many who will shout amen and believe this, carry that grace now. For your products, carry that grace now. For your vision, carry that grace now. For your ministry, carry that grace now. Son of man, what seest thou? I see four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judea, against in the name of Jesus. Every horn that has risen to shut your voice, to shut your relevance, so that you will not be heard. We bury those voices now. We bury those horns now. I say it again, the transforming church. 
We bury those voices now. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory. I'm wrapping up. Something is resting on your life. Ala marato savelake barakusia, kraga da belake baranto shabras, kraba semelem baras kabaras, savraga da balaga da fraga da belake ta, kraba kata baraka ta branta ka belake ta, skapa raka ta brasa ka ta belak, raka ta belento sobra ka te, raka ta belake parus ka pradesh, ebraka parato branta ka belake parus ya ta. Hallelujah. I'm led in my spirit to speak over two areas and then we're done. Can I pray for your finances? Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. This finance thing, ba, this finance thing, if God does not help you, you will sit down one day and cry like a baby, no matter how old you are. Did you hear what I said? You will not cry because you don't have food to eat. You will cry because you are watching prophecy limited by lack of resources. There are many books today that would have blessed the nation stirring revivals. Money stopped that move. There are many apostolic and prophetic voices, evangelical pastoral voices that should be heralding his message to the nations but they are incapacitated by resources. You want to see attack let the grace for wealth start coming close to you. You will see more attack in your life. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Please hear me. I'm saying this because for someone, if you don't get angry with lack, you may sit down and have visions all you can. And yet you will go and meet the Lord. You will not do one tenth of what he has told you to do. I'm wrapping up, Reverend Sam. When God called me, I listened to late Pat Robertson, 700 Club, and he prayed a prayer as a young man. He said when God called him, naive, not knowing many things, he said, Lord, give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I took out time to pray that prayer and to study them. Then when I came to the subject of favor, I saw that naturally speaking, I did not have any advantage that I could lean on. And I listened to Dr. Mike Modok. May God bless him. Bless him. Thankfully, we still have him alive. This man spoke about favor. And I began to learn certain things. I took one month to pray. And I said, God, don't send me with a message alone. I said, Lord, you have to help me and show me, show me your help, even in this area. You have given me an apostolic call. It is an expensive call, financially expensive, not just attacks from the spirit. Even if nobody attacks you, you will still not move forward if you don't have resources. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Thankfully, I was so honored to have Reverend Sam with us at Manchester last year. It was a surprise just like pastor jerry was saying i mean he's not just done that to pastor jerry i think he's done that to almost everyone within his circle that sacrifice he was over at manchester and the lord gives us an instruction to put something at the largest indoor arena and he said not collect offering there's nothing wrong with free and then to pay to i mean to to feed all the workers over 2,000, 2,500 people to feed them. And he said, don't collect offering. Don't make one mention. I said, God, but giving is one of the ways people rise. He said, no, there is a narrative about church within the European space that I want to use this conference to correct. Obedience is hard when you are poor. You believe whatever you want to believe. I will tell you this as, as sincere and as modest as I can be.
I'm saying that because your story is about to change. Let me tell you this. There are many visions today. By God's prophetic hand upon your life, you are supposed to have gone far. There are younger ministers, younger apostolic and prophetic voices that are rising, but you are incapacitated. The problem is not lack of grace. You have the content, you are disciplined, you have character, people of consecration, but you are pegged in one place. Right now, the unbelieving community have bought O2 Arena in UK. They bought Excel and they banned Christian activities there completely. While that is happening, we are here praying in tongues and that is good. But very soon, they will buy up everything and push us out. You see, let me tell you the truth. You must adopt, you see. Jesus the model had a treasurer and he did not shy away from the issue of finances. There are times, there were times when they came to embarrass him. And they said, you claim to be a preacher of righteousness, but you are wanting in the area of finances. He didn't argue. He got the money and showed us from that example how to enjoy peace in life. To give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. There are things that belong to Caesar. The moment you are serving God, Caesar will come to embarrass you. Embarrass your integrity. And say you are preaching, you are calling, you've not paid your tax. You know, preparing for a conference in UK and Canada, Reverend Sam, you know this better than all of us. I mean, you cannot imagine the things you have to pay for. Insurance, seats, car park. Huh? Once you are gathering a crowd in excess of 10,000 uh, 10, people, there are certain, oh dear. By the time they are done with you, you will go back for a retreat and ask whether God really sent you. I mean what I'm saying. We exhausted the doors that were open for Canada and we had to now get another 5,000 overflow. And once we did, they had to renegotiate the contract as if the first one was null and void. Ah, but in Nigeria, they can say, okay, since you have done this, love Nigeria, oh, it's not that bad. We are still kind. The kind of help that is needed for you to go forward. I'm speaking to a businessman. I'm speaking to someone in ministry. The kind of help that only God can bring to men. Honestly, I prophesy to you here on this altar, beginning from now and the next 90 days, if you have the faith to believe, write it down and believe. Begin to enjoy tremendous supplies. Tremendous supplies. I prophesy to you tremendous supplies. I place prophetic words upon your head. Let helpers arise. Let financiers arise. Let favor conduits arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid you from begging and borrowing. Finances will not limit your becoming. Finances will not limit your rising. Finances will not limit your driving. You will lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. Reverend Sam. Will you lend me one minute to speak over those in debt? I'm hearing in my spirit debt. Debt like owing. There are some of you who are neck deep in troubles. There are preachers you are behind. And if God does not help you, you will plunge into depression. Every time people got into debt, it was not business that brought them out. It was prophecy. Whether it's lack of food in Samaria or the axe head that fell, at last, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought them out. I want to speak to someone. Whether it is personal debt, I've been in debt before. I know the inconvenience that I... There are people who are not sick, but the trouble on their head is better to even be sick. Hallelujah. Can I pray that for you? Because you need to come out of it. The embarrassment, the shame, and the reproach I tell you, being in debt will strip you of your dignity. People who have no, no audacity to talk to you will tear you down because you are in debt. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Standing on the graces that are here represented, I decree and declare within the next 90 days, by the wisdom of God, by the mercy of God, by the gift of man, 
by the ministry of helpers by all godly means come out of death in the name of Jesus come out of begging and borrowing in the name of Jesus you will owe no man nothing but love at least at a personal level in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I sense in my heart that for someone else one of the reasons why you have gotten into debt is because of greed please forgive me and don't feel insulted we're wrapping up but it's something the Lord is putting in my heart because there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat your seed has never been part of prophecy never been part of advancing anything kingdom sometimes I feel embarrassed doing this but you see let me tell you the truth there is nobody who prospers in the kingdom if you are not a giver the attacks on an unbeliever is not the same attack on you the unbeliever can thrive with certain principles because they are largely serving Babylon you are vowed to serve the kingdom hallelujah this man you see is not just a receiver by the mercy of God and I apologize if it sounds arrogant maybe the only thing I've not given is, is, is to remove my heart and remove the life and give don't just covet people's testimonies this is why sometimes as inconveniencing as it is it's good for pastors to tell people certain testimonies so they don't just pretend and assume sometimes it's inconveniencing because people mistaking them for pride I have given seeds to the millions of dollars let me tell you I'm saying it to your face don't think I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I, I almost feel like I just sinned against God now but it's important to tell you don't just think that uh, no no a gentleman came like about a month ago who had been so blessed prayed for him in Ghana God expanded him he's become a millionaire he traveled from Ghana and came with me was it ten hundred thousand dollars or hundred and fifty to come and give me and when he came I blessed him and the Lord said uh -uh, this is not for you let him take it back to Koinonia account in the US and deposit it there you think I don't know what to do with a hundred and fifty thousand dollars even if I don't know, I'm surrounded by too many wise people to help me know what to do with it. Your heart for God, oh, I don't want to deceive. Let's not just shout amen and wrap up and go away. If your heart is still closed, I tell you, your financial gate will be closed eternally. Hallelujah. I'm saying this to you so that you know that behind certain extraordinary results, there are things that men do. Whatever you cannot part with deserves to rule over you. One of the ways that God conquers materialism and carnality is to give you prophetic instructions to give. I always ask why God will insist that people will give. I'm not asking you to give, not necessarily. But I'm just telling you that one of the ways God prunes the dominion of material things over you is that occasionally in your life he will give you instructions that you almost want to cast that voice away. He does it not because of the money at all. He does it because he wants what has taken his place in your heart to die. Let me pray my last prayer now. Pastor Jerry shared it very powerfully. We adjust to systems and structures, but we never bend. Some of you are bent too far. You would rather leave God than to be poor. Now you've gone too far. That one is dangerous. You would rather push Jesus out of the scene to get fame. That one is dangerous. Are we together? The moment anything fights the place and the position of God in your life, you are already at a danger zone. I can tell you that. I'm praying for someone here who you have lost your love for Jesus. I know this is advanced conference, but please allow me to wrap up with this prayer. You have lost touch with spiritual things. Maybe because you really want to make money, you want fame, you want all of these things. I can tell you the truth. When you take Jesus out of the equation of your life, your life remains barren and empty. And most people just say yes mechanically, but their lives show that Jesus is far, somewhere in their space outside. God is calling us deeper. The strength of the believer is the position you have placed God in. Not just that he's in your heart. Where in your heart is he? You can be in my house and I can leave you somewhere outside. You are in my house but you are still outside. 
you can be in my house and I drop you somewhere at the visitor's lounge. You are in my house. But there are inner chambers in every house. And people you treasure, you take them there. There are many of you, Jesus is around your life, not in your heart. He's not outside, but he's around. Somewhere joining the queue after money and fame before him. God is calling you now that in all your pursuits, you need to redirect your passion. Can I speak a word of restoration for someone? You've lost your fire. You've lost your spiritual texture. You've lost your zeal for spiritual things. And God sent you to advance conference tonight. I agree with Reverend Sam on your behalf. In the name that is above all names, I decree the grace that draws men to a depth of intimacy with God beyond money, beyond material things, beyond ministry, beyond fame. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Everyone wave your hands and I want you to begin to pray. Lord, I desire you like never before. Beyond money, let me find you. Beyond fame, let me find you. Beyond progress, let me find you. Wherever I've lost you at any point in my life, I obtain grace. Let me find the true north of my destiny. Let me find you again. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him.